Hello fellow tank commander. You may have been expecting a German accent here, but no, that felt a little high risk. In this video we are batch painting four German World War II tanks in a desert themed style, which thanks to a common typo on Google during my research, almost became dessert themed. Delicious! The tanks were built in the previous video and now I've based them with a three colour mix because I can't get Neapolitan ice cream out of my head. Here we have Ancient Stone, Desert Yellow and Ice Yellow, all from the Army Painters new Fanatic range. But in a bizarre twist I'm adding the decals on this early in the painting phase. What? Madness! But stay with me. My theory being that the majority of the paints that I introduce from now onwards will be semi-transparent and tinting the desert colour below. If the decals go on last, they look out of place, like brand new stickers slapped on the side, but adding them now means that each stage of weathering ties them into our tank. Whilst I show you this fine selection of clips of decals being added with surgical precision, remember that our goal for these videos is for you to comment below on the historical inaccuracies that you observe but they all need to be inaccurate corrections. An example of this is that the red number 33 that is slapped on the side of this Jagdpanzer is in fact from the Belgium campaign when the Germans were honouring the contributions of Scotty Pippen during the Bulls 3P. Sponging on a small amount of the base colour onto the decals to act as a paint chipping that our hunks of metal have acquired over time. All of the paints that I'm using in today's video come from the Army Painters new range of paints called Fnatic, which is what everyone is raving about. I've included these paints in my rotation of what I use when I'm painting, and my pitch to you is that if you're a beginner painter jumping into the hobby, and you're looking for a range of paints that are really easy to use, and they're vibrant and you get great results, consider these because straight out of the gate you'll have success like I am today. Adding some detail, character and weathering to our tanks now and I've kicked off with a thin wash of soft tone. By using thinner in a 50-50 ratio, I find that I'm left with a smoother result and I don't get those dark coffee stain looking pools on some of the flat surfaces. This is the concept of batch painting in action right here. I've mixed one paint and I'm bouncing from model to model until the single stage has been completed on all of my tanks in this batch. I should zoom out and show you the complete setup one day for batch painting because it's a screen with a TV show, which today is the new Fallout series, some snacks to the side and the models and paints in front. I'm in my own little zone and it becomes really relaxing. You could thinly paint edge highlights across each tank, but dry brushing is faster and that dusty look that you sometimes are left with, well hey, that's perfect today. Onto the tracks and some more weathering steps, and I'll continue to include the information in the top right about what paints I'm using, but I should probably tell you a little about what it is that I'm actually painting today. These tanks are all from a company called Warlord Games who created Bolt Action, which you've likely heard of. It's a 28mm scale historical war game, putting you in command of forces during the Second World War. Using the same miniatures, Warlord Games have created the fast-paced spin-off game called Achtung Panzer, which is tanks vs tanks skirmish combat. I'm interested in so many different tabletop games, but I don't have the time, money or space to dive blindly into bolt action, but I'm happy to pick up and paint 8 tanks in a weekend so that Gordon and I can have some head-to-head -head quick games of tank combat and see if overall it takes our fancy. For those of us that live on the coast or even in the harsher climates, we know that sand, sand gets everywhere. So I'd like layers of sand and dust to be gathering on the tank's armour panels and you could use pigment powders, but check this out. My ice yellow mixed with a boatload of thinner and I brush this across areas of the model that I want the dust to have gathered. It looks ridiculous as it goes on, I know, but you have the benefit of watching to see how mine turns out before you commit to yours. Once dry, I think that it's a really neat and cost-effective way of using the paints you already have to create weathering effects. Another weathering effect I'm using here is a mix of the Strong Skin Shade, their Rust Effect paint, and some thinner to create my own streaking grime. 
Once combined, I'm picking out a handful of rivets and chipped paint areas and I pull the brush downwards. You get the final say on how your models will look. You get to take the steps that you've enjoyed and apply them, and the rest you can appropriately ignore. That's the best thing about all these different online painting tutorials, is that you can grab what you like from each and create your own favourite models. But now, let's take a look at how my German tank squadron has turned out. Let me know what you thought of my painting efforts today, and better yet, you could even let me know if I do another Choose Your Own Painting Adventure series, what topic you'd like to see. Warhammer Age of Sigma, Judge Dredd, something completely different. But now the exciting part, as you get to choose the next step in your painting journey, and you can pick between either painting some muddy British tanks on the European front, or you can launch yourself 40,000 years into the future and be corrupted by chaos as we explore a Choose Your Own Adventure painting series all about painting different Chaos Space Marines. Whichever one you choose, I look forward to seeing you there.